Good morning, everyone. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> well, it's good to see so many of you here. Today we are going to be talking about Machu Picchu and Cusco and the Sacred Valley and some other very, very fascinating places. How many in this group are going on the uh, excursion to Machu Picchu? All right, quite, quite a few. Okay, so uh, if you're like me, you love nature, you love the symmetry, the beauty, the colors, the sights, the sounds. Now combine that with an ancient culture who had magnificent skills of working with stone. And then you take that magnificent talent and you put it high up on a mountaintop in the middle of Peru. And that's Machu Picchu. It's just an amazing place. If you have not been there, you've got to go. It is a bucket list item. There is no doubt about it. Now, as always, in all of my lectures, I want you please to ask questions when you have them. Don't be shy at all. This is a lecture for you to learn about where we are going and what we might see, as well, of course, as about photography. But this is one of those high-definition pans that I did. And this photo is composed of approximately 80 different individual photos. And so as we you know, begin to zoom in, the, the detail is there, even though uh, we are now looking at a very minute portion of this image. But what I first want to do is give you just a flavor of what Machu Picchu is all about. So let's, let's just look at the, kind of get an, an overview of the general area. This, my perspective here, is uh, an area that if you can get to, I would encourage you to do so. It's not terribly difficult. There, Machu Picchu uh, is an area where there are significant stairs, stone steps that lead to various vantage points. This area here is the primary complex of Machu Picchu. And then there are, in other footage, I'm going to show you the stairways that bring you up to this area. And then slowly you can meander up to these various terraces. And on these terraces, you're likely to encounter a llama that are there, very friendly llamas that have uh, made this their home. And you can get some really uh, remarkable shots. And then there's this uh, structure up here, which you'll all see once you finally get there. And then I'm going to later on identify some of these amazing uh, geological formations in Machu Picchu as well. I'm going to start by showing you the only finished video that I did uh, last year uh, of Machu Picchu. And this is only a couple minutes long, but it gives you a general flavor, and then we're going to go into some more specifics. Thank you. 
All right, so again, let's let's start with Cusco, uh, where you'll all be entering into. And um, again, if you have any questions about any of these destinations, uh, I'm, I'm acting somewhat as a travel guide today, in addition to uh, being a photographer. Um, has anyone seen the, the Nazca lines or the Palpa lines in Peru? A few people have, okay. Uh, in the general vicinity, I, I doubt seriously that any of you will have an opportunity uh, to see any of these, but there are so many of these amazing structures that are just scattered throughout the Peruvian landscape. And so I, I wish I knew the dimensions of the monkey here, but this is shot from the air. I did some aerial photography for a company out there. And we, our intent was to document all of the Nazca lines and the Palpa lines. And we actually did that, some 40 or 50 different figures. And then many, many of these are actually unknown, or at least uh, they haven't been given names. So that's the monkey, and then here's we have a spider. What's in that one? Can you see it? A whale, yeah. What's that? Hard to see. That's a dog. And you see, see this area in here? That's a road. So in many of these uh, beautiful artifacts, there are civilization has intruded upon them. This is some very strange, bizarre shape. It's like a gourd, a gourd here with seven hands that are coming out of these. And these are. All these structures are quite large. That's a hummingbird. Uh, the two-handed creature here, and then a, a tree here, and then this is a highway. That's a parrot. This is some uh, circular geometric form. Uh, I don't recall its name. Again, some more geometric forms. Now, are any pilots in the audience? Yeah. Doesn't this not look like a, a landing strip? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Von Donegan, I guess in the, what, the 60s or 70s, he wrote a number of books about uh, astronauts uh, visiting um, uh, planet Earth, and I think it's perhaps more likely that these were very creative people who were building uh, interesting monuments. Yes? Are these structures or are they carvings out of the earth? I thought that question would come up, and so at the very end of this short sequence of slides, I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. Uh, these are some llamas, and again, these would probably be in a neighborhood of 100 feet uh, tall. And you can see here at the edge of this cliff, uh, th these are mountain ranges, and yet you have these beautifully straight lines going at that arc. Quite quite a feat. None of you know, of course the technology of the day didn't allow anyone to get uh, above your tiptoes. And so why they created these structures that can only be seen from the air is somewhat of a mystery. These are aqueducts which are found in, in numerous spots, uh, an ingenious way to uh, obtain water in a dry environment. This is inside one of those aqueducts. So here, this is the landscape, the Peruvian landscape, and you can see that the uh, the sand is dark. It's a gray, uh, a gray color. And, and if you disturb the surface level, this is Steve Noble's first um, uh, national line. And so that was done with my foot. And so if you were to, basically this is an enormous canvas. That's what the Nazca lines and the Papa lines are, an enormous canvas. So I can see that uh, people that uh, lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago would be fascinated by this blank canvas and would want to create some art. How they did it uh, perhaps is still a mystery, but uh, nonetheless uh, interesting. Um, this is one of the uh, amphitheater-like areas in the Sacred Valley, and the area is, uh, you'll see some of this as you're 
uh, passing uh, to the both the train and as the train is traversing to Machu Picchu. Uh, but the, the landscape is really beautiful. There's uh, rolling hills and meadows, and you'll see um, uh, people tending their flocks of sheep and, and going about their day. On the way to Machu Picchu is the Inca Trail, and you can actually take the Inca Trail in one day or in four days, and it's a rather arduous uh, trek. There's one of the rare photos of me, I hardly on any photos. Um, but it's, it's a wonderful hike, that, and you can see this, this uh, structure here is very Machu Picchu-like, but this is well outside of Machu Picchu. And you can see a little waterfall in here. Just some beautiful, beautiful scenery as you're hiking up to Machu Picchu. All right, let's get into Cusco. Cusco is a destination unto itself. This is, this is a, a nighttime scene of what's called the Plaza de Armas. And this is a very, very large file, so it's taking its good time to load. Uh, again, this is a sequence of numerous photos put together to create a, a large panorama. So this is the Plaza de Armas, and you're going to see some cathedrals. Uh, so as you finally make your way to the Plaza de Armas, and this is a must-see place to, uh, to check out, um, you're going to you're going to see um, this cathedral. So this is your orientation. And up on the hill is this Christ the Redeemer statue, or Christ the Redeemer-like statue, which is illuminated at night. Pan this image, and it gives us uh, some beautiful uh, fountains and, and uh, gardens are in this area. You'll probably be getting there uh, in the neighborhood of four or five in the, in the evening. And so soon it will be nighttime. And this is a great place to kind of hang out. Steve? Yes? Did you happen to stitch that together? With yes, that, that, again, that's a, that, that shot, because you can see the, the, the clarity is so great, that means that there were numerous photos. There was probably in the neighborhood of seven or eight individual sequences on the top and then seven or eight individual sequences on the bottom. Then they're all combined together to create one super image and that's something that could be the size of that screen there and you could put on your wall and the clarity would, would be there. One of the fascinating things about uh, uh, Cusco is the, the, the rock work. And I was telling my table mates last night that the rock work in in Cusco rivals, if not surpasses, that of Machu Picchu, which is amazing. And uh, so to me, I, I look at this, I see things like this, and I marvel at the skill that went into creating uh, these cuts, these rock cuts like this, the, um, how they're fitted together. And these are not small stones. This, this stone is uh, a cultural icon in Peru. This has, let's count them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve different cuts on this stone, and it is so perfect. You could bring a razor blade to those scenes and you could not insert that razor blade. Uh, the, the workmanship is so amazing. So you can see here the size of these stones. That stone weighs, I don't know, probably if it were to be removed, a uh, ton, two tons, I, I don't even know how to gather. As you take this path, you can see that the alleyway uh, goes up this area here, but there's gonna be a turn right here, a corner, and it goes down, and it looks like nothing. It looks like some other tourist uh, shops and vendors, but go down that way, there's some really fascinating things down there and I'm going to show you some of those things right here so this is this is the wall and at the time I took this photo I couldn't see it I could not see the puma but this is the head 
of the pluma, and this is the eye, and then the pluma's back here, and let's see, coming all the way back here to the tail, uh, and then, let's see, this is the front paw, and it comes up here, and he told me that this was the pluma's fertility, important in the Peruvian culture. Uh, so it's hard to see here, but if I darken this, it now, I mean, that's a puma, right? That's a real puma. You look at this and we have a lack of perspective in the shot. Is this a stone gate? Is it a stone fence? Is it six feet high? Is it 20 feet high? It's hard to tell until you put something of size in there and then we can understand. How did they move this stone? How did they move this stone into place? Better yet, how did they put that one up there? So, uh, I mean, you got to stop and look and enjoy these amazing uh, cultures and things that you see there.